Rejoice, my friends. The first season of Cosmic Crucible is going on right now without a hitch. Oh, wait. My bad. The idiots at Scoplay couldn't match the players correctly, so the whole thing just got canceled for everyone. The fine button to locate gears, shards, and ISO 8 is still missing. Is this borderline game-breaking bug going to be fixed, or has Scoplay stopped caring? No solutions for a lot of these bugs. Minimal communication is going on for a few weeks now. And one of the biggest questions in the community, is this game going into maintenance mode? We're diving into these topics and more in this edition of the Monday Mailbag. Yeah, we got all your questions as well. So if you're ready for all of that, you know what to do, Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Valley Club. Hello, Valley Maniacs. What is up? I am Valley Flying. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope Marvel Strike Force and all its bugs and all the new bugs that are being introduced with the minimal communication from devs isn't stressing you out too bad. I hope you had a great weekend. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. Yeah, we got the great content despite what is going on in the game. We got some fun stuff, top 10 lists, guides. And uh, in this particular instance, when the game feels like it's going into maintenance mode, we got a lot of these uh, videos calling out to devs and a lot of the things that they're doing. Now, uh, if you've already subscribed though, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about a lot of things here. And this is the Monday mailbag, which we do every single Monday. And if you want to get your question potentially featured on one of these videos, make sure you go down below and hit that link to Discord. But let's talk about one of the big issues that we had this weekend. And that was the lack of Cosmic Crucible. So this is from the devs support site, from the Scopely help site. Cosmic Crucible issue, last updated on the 17th. There was an issue today with Cosmic Crucible where not all players were properly put into matches. Yeah, I guess because everybody is now into silver two brackets, which the devs said would be fixed after the next season, but uh, obviously we're not getting this next, uh, or after the next trial, we're not getting this trial because uh, they couldn't figure this stuff out. So it got canceled. This means that the current trial will be canceled. Canceled. Additionally, compensation will be sent out for our area. Yeah, that's awesome. No, we'll get some compensation, but no fun. Hopefully they give a lot of uh, ISO 8 blue level four because that's the big thing that we're uh, battling for in this Cosmic Crucible. Additionally, compensation will be sent for the error. We appreciate your patience in the interim. Yeah, lots of patience to play this game, guys. All right, the, the issues that they're still tracking from last week, no solutions yet. Top text is still broken. So when claiming on that add button on the top of your game, Nothing gets added as far as the ISO 8 energy, the campaign energy, the power cores. No, you, you gotta hit the, the little button on the site. And the big thing right now is that gear finder button not working. Now, one of the questions that was asked on chat is asked all the time, is the game going into maintenance mode? And I thought it was, it feels like it. The devs aren't really communicating. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of bugs. They're not getting fixed. We're getting more bugs before the older ones are getting fixed. So I did some research. Now it is very minimal research. When I typed into maintenance mode in gaming, this is the first article that popped up. And what this article said, and it sounds right, maintenance mode is a point when an MMO, and this is describing MMO, but I, I'm assuming it goes for a lot of different games as well is being maintained reliably, but isn't being actively developed any longer. This is almost always a net result of the game being older, not having much in the way of budget and or active player base left to really appreciate the active development. And it sounds like Marvel Strike Force is doing the exact opposite of maintenance mode, whatever that was called. Because uh, yeah, the game is not being maintained reliably, but it's still being developed. You know, there's still content being pushed out, new characters being pushed out, offers being pushed out, but maintaining the game reliably, that is not being done. So uh, at least if this definition is correct, it looks like Marvel Strike Forces now is in opposite of maintenance mode where they're putting out a lot of content, but not maintaining it, not maintaining the bugs, not maintaining their quality of the game. So yeah, I guess I guess uh, if this definition is correct, we're in reverse or bizarro maintenance mode right now, but uh, let's go into 
the Discord, the mailbag section to answer the rest of your questions from Discord right now. Boom, first question of the week. Hello, once again, from the Scopely Support Mess. That is bot ticket open on Friday, September 9 ticket. Still open on September 13th. And a typical scummy Scopely move. They've now changed it from not heard of you in 30 minutes and not heard in seven days. I guess that'll stop people from contacting daily because every day we have another issue that we have to wait a week for a support ticket. So I'm getting close. So uh, to close, I'm guessing they will hope players forget about contact them again. Yeah, so uh, that's why I am constantly tracking that known issues page. But yeah, that support is a mess. And I get a lot of questions about support. What should I do if I got this response or that response? It seems it's very random. Some some customer service reps actually do a good job. When something breaks, they give you the compensation for the thing that breaks. Others are so confused. They're like, oh, what has happened here? I don't know what's going on. Uh, that is working as intended when clearly not. Or like our, like our good friend Brian telling players that they need to play better and they need to upgrade other characters like Vision before he got his Bionic Avengers rework. All right, but yeah, they, they, they uh, hopefully you get a good customer service person that can close your ticket and uh, you can get a new one or, or hopefully if you get a bad one, they close your ticket very soon and you could reapply to send your same issue in and you get a good one that I actually uh, do something there because my, my, my relationships with support, sometimes I get good ones, sometimes I get bad ones. All right, hey Valley Fine, greeting from Germany. I noticed that I'm missing daily rewards from Mojo's Mayhem every other day. Two times now, I guess. Did you notice such a thing? Um, I did not notice. And I think what you're talking about is these daily objectives. When you go to them, obviously, if the streak, if you have your streak active, it's one of these active streaks that you could just claim right away as soon as that server resets. But I've already done that. I have not noticed, though. I have not noticed the uh, objectives complete a couple battles in RTA is there or not there so i'm gonna start paying attention to this let me know in chat though if you guys have seen this bug this error pop up you're not getting your rta rewards on your objectives because i believe this is what you're talking about and i'm gonna start paying attention because i just hit claim 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 not noticing if it ever goes in my inventory if all the objectives that used to be there are indeed there so thank you for pointing this out i'm going to start tracking this a little bit more and if you guys have had issues though let me know in chat i do want to uh, relay this to the devs not that they're really going to do anything because they really haven't uh answered questions even in the envoy chat very often over the past couple weeks so uh hopefully we will get some solution for this, or hopefully it is just uh, maybe something there that we didn't notice. Hopefully that's the that's the solution because reporting anything to devs, uh, a lot of times it does get buried under the rug for them. All right, uh, happy Hulk smashing from Ohio. My question is about blitzing. Why does the mode get so much hate? I'm over 500 days plays. I always hear people complain about screen time in the game. I personally love these blitz events because to me it is a balance of the screen time. A 41 team roster can take as little as three to five minutes if you want to complete a, uh, in order to complete a rotation. To me, these blitz events are nice because I can take a little less screen time for a few days and get to unlock something. I cannot think of a time that I haven't at least completed a free to play portion of a blitz event just because they are easy and don't take time. Is that something we should welcome in the game? Uh, when we have so much more, many more events that use up more screen time each day, have a great one, keep it with content. So there's a couple ways to look at this. And maybe you're looking at this a little different than I am because of this 500 days played. I've been playing this game for a long time. I've done a lot of blitzing before we even had Blitz Sim. I mean, there were many years of blitzing that I went through that. And it was a very time consuming game mode. I, I believe a rotation would take about 40 minutes or so uh, because you would have to go in there and hit the battle and at the very least just hit auto on these battles to win them. So I think a lot of us that have been playing for a while remember those days and how grindy Blitz was and how much of a... Um, a lack of fun it brings to the game. It's just kind of a mindless grinding at this point. I mean, you do have to pick some teams and make sure you're picking the right counters, but it's, it's a lot of just mindless gameplay. Whereas, at least for me, some of these other game modes like Tower, like Pocket Dimension, while they're not as uh, easy or they take a little bit more time, because I haven't, I haven't been playing those particular game modes for years, I do... Uh, I do, I do like those a little bit more. Now, you're mentioning three to five minutes in one rotation. There's some of these events, like the Hulkbuster event, like the Echo event, like the Agatha event, where we had to do these full eight rotations, still not 
get a lot. So when you multiply that five by eight, that's up to 40 minutes again of just mindless screen time. I think that is why it gets so much hate. Uh, at 500 days played, it's probably a good way to get familiar with your roster. I know when I was blitzing all the time, I would have to really know these kits like the back of my hand, which characters did what and uh, how to use them. Now, not as much. There's a lot of these newer character kits that uh, just because I have not used them as much, I'm not as familiar with or I have to look up before I use them. So I think that is why the Blitz gets hates. Just uh, there's better use of time. There's other more fun things that we could do in the game rather than just click button, 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 and uh, not really have to think about it. So that's my personal preference. I would like things that are a little more rewarding as far as fun and actually looking for the fun in the game. I would like these events designed around fun, but obviously Scopely has different metrics, the login time, the money spent, how many times are players logging in a day? Those are the things that they want to send to investors. And obviously the money is their bottom line. So I think they're looking at different things than we want. But uh, at the end of the day, for me personally, I just want more fun in this game. But for that to happen, they need to fix all these bugs. I, that, is, that is my main complaint with the game right now. Uh, Shalom from Israel. Shalom back from Texas, my brother. Curious on your thoughts on Global DD5 now with uh, Bionic Avengers and Gamma out. I think perhaps only Abomination and Agatha or uh, Abomination and Hulkter together could be worth it. Uh, Gambit, Lady Deathstrike, and Agatha. Uh, I'm not sure about Lady Deathstrike. Well, let's go look, take a look at my global roster in just a little bit, and I'll give you my recommendations. No need to decay up Captain Sam because he is viable and can punch up a lot in game modes, even at geared 14 and 13 right now. Not really. Uh, my Captain Sam is getting smashed in... Uh, Doom 3, 4, and uh, it's, it's not even funny. So uh, at some of the higher levels, Captain Sam is not going to be as tanky. I would still take him up because Captain Sam is a character that I'm using in the Doom raids every single day in that skill section, where someone like Lady Deathstrike is a great character. She has a great kit, but her team and the usage of that team because of the Bionic Avengers taking over the tech section. I don't really use uh, Lady Deathstrike too much anymore outside of Weapon X. So pretty much she's just a war and a Cosmic Crucible character. Let's go take a look at the uh, global roster here. And I think if for me, I would start building up these horsemen teams. So you mentioned Hulk already. You mentioned uh, some of these other characters. You mentioned Abomination. Rogue is in there. I would start building characters that have that double duty. So Scarlet Witch, not a great character for Dark Dimension, but if you're going to eventually take her up anyway, that wouldn't be the worst choice. Gambit, got to build him up anyway. If you want to get Apocalypse, same thing with Sunfire, Dazzler, Brawn, Abomination are good choices. So I would start to look for your Horseman characters. Uh, maybe not as much the Scourge characters, especially if uh, you've already completed one run of the event. But th after the, my Horseman characters... I'm starting to look at my raid characters. So we got another horseman character in Agatha. But my raid characters that are in the global are going to be Captain Sam, Maria Hill, and Sharon Carter. And until we get a skill team replacement for the Doom Raids, they're still going to have a lot of viability. And most people are still going to be using them on a daily basis. So uh, my choice if I was doing this again, I would probably build up Hulk. Probably not the best in Dark Dimension, but just because Hulk is freaking cool. I would build him up, and uh, he's going to get that usage. I'm going to have to build him up anyway for Apocalypse. Gambit, I probably... And this is just based on their further, their future usage, not their value in Dark Dimension, because if it was just building up for what is going to get me through the quickest in Dark Dimension, obviously some of these characters I wouldn't take. Uh, Gambit is another choice to align with Rogue for Cosmic Crucible. Probably still wouldn't take up Scarlet Witch. I would take up Agatha, though, because she is very, very important in the team i might also take up wong this horseman has that tag there and then um yeah i just because of the lack of stars right now on brawn and abomination probably wouldn't take them up same thing with sunfire and dazzler but uh outside of those characters the hulk gambit agatha and wong the after that i would be looking towards my secret avengers so captain sam maria hell i think is a lot more valuable than um Sharon Carter. Sharon Carter in certain game modes is going to be a lot more valuable, but in Dark Dimension 5, Maria Hill is still there. Now, Doom is 
still a question mark. Uh, I don't use him in the raids anymore, so he lost a lot of value for me. He's going to be a great character in Dark Dimension. He's a great character for war, whether you're placing him on defense or offense, and still a great character for Cosmic Crucible, but a lot less value. He doesn't have that raid value anymore, but if you're looking for a quick solution to get you through dark dimension five as quick as possible doom is still viable just realize that you're not going to use him as much later on as uh as you finish dark dimension five for the uh second time except in war and crucible that's pretty much all that i'm using doom in right now but yeah go for horsemen go for secret avengers that's 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 what i would be playing right now and uh at least for me i'm not looking for their value inside dark dimension but that may be a important consideration for you and if that is something that she is just trying to get through as soon as possible i don't think you have a bad team here uh agatha lady death striker decent captain sam is also decent not just because he's a tank he has that energy distribution uh that ability energy that he hands out he has that aoe attack where he um manipulates the speed bar so he, he does a lot of good th stuff and he helped me significantly because of both the ability energy that he gives out and that terminator manipulation in dark dimension 5 so captain sam's a winner there uh and if you do choose to bring doom and maria hill they're going to be both great in that game mode you got to manage your bots because maria hill summons a bunch of uh, shield uh troopers and then doom has all those doom bots and sometimes when you have too many characters in the field you don't get the max benefit of that there's only 10 characters that you could have per side per battle so if you have too many doom bots or too many troopers they're just gonna kind of overlap and some of them be wasted so those are some of the things to keep in mind for global dark dimension 5 right now but those are my recommendations and those are who i would take in if i was doing this over again valley because of because of help of holding on to mail items but i'm trying to hold any mailbox rewards until the last day on the last day for an item will the timer be expired to drop down to hours or will the timer disappear no it does go down to hours my brother uh i don't have any in my inbox right now that is in that date let's go just take a look but yeah so my latest one right here is two days i've seen it go into like hours now usually when it goes into that hour section i'm like all right I gotta claim it right now. I don't wanna forget later. I don't wanna push it till it says one hour or two hours. So normally when it's uh, in those hours section, I make sure to claim it right away. Just, I don't wanna forget. But yeah, it does, brother. So hopefully that helps you. You can uh, feel confident that you could claim your reward. You could hold on to your rewards until you see that a few hours are remaining and then do what you want, depending on what is the best scenario for what you're trying to do. Hey, Valley, what is up, Alan D? Long time no speak. I hope you are doing well. I want to show the community how Scopeless responds to the community when the bugs affect their community. The response below. All right, let's go look at this. And it says, hi, Lord Keys, this is Gritchen. I'm sorry to hear your alliance war hasn't started yet. We strongly we suggest contacting your alliance leader to know if there's any recent changes he made in your war time zone. If you have any concerns, please let us know, and we'd be happy to help further. There's no change to War's time zone, Gretchen. It's been since Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it says it's launching in on Thursday. Why would it not have launched after an update on Thursday? Because Skill Police screws things up. They screw things up. They, they've screwed up a lot in this update. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you get a better customer service response that uh, from someone that actually knows what's going on. Uh, I hope this goes to show that they make things up uh, when, problem, when the problems they create from their lack of attention to detail are the player's problem. You're a solid advocate for the community, and besides mobile gamer, have the largest following in the community. Please give Scopely my regards, as that a delete account option looks more and more appealing every day. I get it, brother, I get it. Being a long time player and seeing nonsense like this when we didn't change our time zone because of their stupid war event, and for us to still lose an entire war because of their sheer incompetence leaves a bad taste in my alliance his mouth as well as other alliances that have encountered this in zone four so i was actually in zone four and i think this may have to do with timing because uh before we were made aware of these issues last week and then we extended the 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 war rewards for last week's event uh we actually switched from tuesday thursday saturday to monday so we did a we did a war on monday and then back on Thursday, we were back to our normal schedule. So there may be something in the timing there. Uh, this may not be customer services fault, or they may just be dumb. That's 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 another likely scenario. But uh, I think if you switch your war zone at a certain time, you could lose out on a war. 
if that is uh i'm not an alliance leader so i haven't done this personally but that's what i'm hearing so hopefully hopefully that wasn't the case it's a big screw up on scopely zan you get compensated for all that stuff my brother i appreciate everything you do for anyway keep on smashing i will try my brother uh uh, and uh, to add to the previous thread, see the alliance correspondence from the alliance leader. Yeah, I, I did not, uh, I was not able to open this, my brother. So uh, if you could send this as a link, uh, but this link does not work for me. All right, uh, I have a question about who you think would be worth building at the end of this patch. Uh, I think of uh, leveling up Red Hulk, Spider Weaver in this patch, but are they worth building or not? Any thoughts? Because I want to use my gear and gold training mats wisely. So if you're looking for that goal of Apocalypse, both those characters, you're going to need to build. You're going to need Red Hulk because he is a horseman. And they did announce that that exclusive new Spider Weaver character is also going to be an Apocalypse Unlocked. Now, the good thing about building Spider Weaver... I have not unlocked her, but everyone that has said that that character is crazy overpowered, especially is because of the 100% accuracy that she reduces on the enemies. So not a bad choice to build up. Same with Red Hulk. That's probably what I'm really gonna build up in this update. Obviously, I need to get those character shards first for Spider Weaver because uh, I didn't buy her, but uh, yeah, I'm probably not gonna put too much into Noir, probably not too much into 2099. And the Underworld team does look a, like a trap, especially in their current form. They were designed to take on Dormhold and Dormammu combinations and uh, other other Darkhold combinations with uh, Red Guardian and things like that. Well, as far as their testing, at this point, still not able to do that, which is why none of the Envoys got footage about them beating a Dormhold. Now, I did hear that they could beat a Darkhold. We never got the footage for that. I don't have that full team, so... I don't know, but they're supposed to be a good team. The Underworld looks like a trap. The Tangled Web looks like a good team for Cosmic Crucible, but not a lot of value outside of that. So I think I think you're doing the right thing. Just Red Hulk, just Spider Weaver. And if you want to put a little bit more love into your Cosmic Crucible team of these Tangled Web characters, then you can. If, if we're going to get a Cosmic Crucible. I mean, I thought we'd be playing Cosmic Crucible battle right now, but that's silly on me. All right, not a question, more of a rant. How do you feel the game is holding up and engaging the player base right now? This is definitely one of the low points in the game. There's been highs, they've been, there's been lows as well. And I think the game was going in a positive direction until that Hulkbuster event. That Hulkbuster blitz grindy event just kind of uh, was the turning point in this game. Additionally, when they changed the times for all the, the server resets and some of the things switched over, some didn't, and we're getting like new errors every day because of that, that definitely contributed to the downfall. And then this patch has just been crap with this uh, minimal communication. So yeah, the, the game is definitely in a very, very bad place right now. It's just bad management and scummy practice from Scopely Boundless. Two passes and both were 100 stars split. All right, yeah, so... Yeah, not a lot of not a lot of great events. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a question here. Uh, looks like a lot of complaining, but yeah, I, I get it, brother. There's a lot to complain about in the game. You can't play the game anymore because it's now pointless. You can't upgrade skill level up gear anymore. You can't achieve anything. Oh, this I, I, I think they're going a little little overboard. There's still some things you can't do. I mean, I, the the find button being missing or not working, and it does work on some devices. I've heard some people on Android said it does work. I know on my Blue Stacks. It, it kind of works. It's out of order, but I got nothing on my iOS. Uh, I've heard other people's Androids have nothing as well. So, yeah, this this game isn't a bad place, brother. Um, but it, it is still playable. I'm still playing. I'm still doing as much I can daily, just in the hopes that Scopely is finally going to communicate, turn this game around, give us some good news, stop with other BS. But I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of an optimist. But uh, spend all your own hard-earned real money and you still have no option but to follow the company way and exactly the same teams as everyone else. Yeah, if, if you want Apocalypse, if you want Apocalypse, if you don't believe that that is going to be the game-changing character of Marvel Strike Force, then you probably could skip him. Uh, and I guess you could still have fun even without that and even without being in the meta. So I think it's I think it's up to us to make our own fun in this game, at least until uh, hopefully things get corrected. All right, Laker King, what is up? Ever since 6.4, the find button isn't working for T1 ISO 8. Oh, not just T1 ISO 8, my brother. 
Gear also not working. Character shards also not working. I'm able to farm my progress characters, which is completely frustrating. I agree with you, my brother. I've alliance members experienced the same issue. Support says that our team is working on it, but I see this is a major issue in the game. Don't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Like I said in the beginning, potentially game-breaking bug. And for some players, this is a game-breaking bug. Support says team is working on it. I expect major compensation for this. How do you think they'll compensate us? Um, I don't know. Some... Cree Royal Guard Shards or something like that. I don't know. So their, 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 their compensation is usually pretty good. I shouldn't make fun of that. But but let's get rid of these errors, guys. This is the this is a big. What the heck? Why is this error going on? Uh, what do I want though? Let's let's give us some. They're gonna give us energy. They should give us a lot of bliss charges. They should give us a lot of. Uh, Campaign energy, ISO 8 energy, because I know with my ISO 8 energy, I'm not even sure what to farm because I don't know what is on what node. I didn't go back and memorize that. So I know I'm wasting a lot of ISO 8 energy just for this victory blueprint. But yeah, lots of energy and maybe even progress towards these milestones. Just give us some progress towards these milestones because they're too silly to fix this stuff in a timely manner. All right, let's move on. Carl. Hulk smash from Carl across the pond in the UK is sending positive vibes in Texas. Positive vibes sent back to you, my brother. Why isn't anybody talking about the fact that we now can't farm gear directly from the character screen? Uh, this, this must be an older message because everybody's talking about it right now, especially that it's still not fixed. That way you can't farm gear directly from the character uh, screen. Finding uniques in character campaigns is okay. Yeah, not, not that not that bad. I'd, I'd rather do it right from the character selection screen. But the ISO 8 is a freaking nightmare. Yeah, that's why I said with ISO 8, I don't know what the heck I'm farming. I'm not looking up specific things for the class that I want. I'm just going for... There's two sections into ISO 8. I'm just going for that first section and everything not with that extra energy. I'm just farming that stuff. Yeah. So I'm wasting my uh, ISO 8 energy right now. Do you think it's still safe to invest in Infinity Watch? Because I'm mine at 650k, gear 14, except Adam at 15. And we want to know if I should lay off them since we're getting pushed out of these uh, new teams. I would if you don't have your other or if you don't have your other teams completed. And I'm talking whatever you need for your arena, whatever you need for your raids. And depending on how hard you're going in Crucible and War, having their team set. Now, Infinity Watch is a very, very good team on both War Offense, Crucible Offense, and War Defense, and Crucible Defense. So they're going to give you some value. That's pretty much all you're getting from them right now. Back in the day, they give you value in every single game. When Adam Warlock was all over the place, that whole team was all over Arena. Not so much anymore. So... You can invest in them. I think there's other teams that you should prioritize in front of them. But if you've already done these teams, I see no reason you couldn't go back and work on the Infinity Watch. I still see them as a top 10 team. They're just, I just don't think they're their five, top five team anymore. But they're going to give you a lot of value in those two modes, especially War, Crucible, not too much other places. So if you're cool with that, invest in them. If you're not and you want those resources going through someone that's going to benefit you right now, then uh, that's probably the way to go. It's, it's not going to be a, it's a cookie cutter answer for everybody. It's going to be based on who you have leveled up and what you're actually doing in game, my brother. All right, sorry. I have another question. What teams are you working on for the War Scourge for Red Hulk? I got my Thor Sif at level 90, but started working on Heimdall, got him to gear 13. Do you think I need to work on Jane Foster and Valkyrie? Valkyrine, if not. Um... I'm actually building up all my hero as guardians right now. I'll show you. I'll show you who I have in the game just to see where they're built before this scourge starts. So we're still on global. Let's clear that off. Go to hero as guardians. That's the first uh, class here. So as guardian, and you can see just pretend Hela and Loki aren't here, but all of them are at least level 85. All of them are at least gear. 15 little more love put in the thor that's what i'm going in with my hero as guardians let's go all the way down to the wave one avengers because they're also used in that uh most of my resources are going towards iron man because he is a bionic avenger he's going to be needed in the war scourge event coming up after this uh not a, he's in the death scourge event after the war scourge event the Bionic Avengers is going to be needed for that. Hulk is a horseman character, so he's going to eventually need some gear and some levels if we want to unlock Apocalypse. And Thor is just uh, the big damage dealer on the team. 
Now, I started putting some ISO 8 on some of these characters, trying to farm these ISO 8. Hawkeye probably would have been done if we didn't have that ISO 8 bug that I could farm every day, but uh, this is where the Wave 1 Avengers are. And last but not least, let's clear that off and take a look at my Ravagers. I have not put a lot into these Ravagers right now. T'Challa fell out of that raid, tech raid meta. I'm not really using them on offense to punch up against some big teams. The only one I would consider building up right here is Yandu because he does summon Stitchers. He's going to summon some minions, which could take some pressure off of your team. So unless you're equipping Scourges that uh, are benefiting the enemies when your characters die, I think it's a decent option to bring in Yandu and just be careful of what Scourges you equip. But that is my characters. That is uh, what my final day before or my final roster is before this War Scourge event goes live. All right, uh, aloha, bro. What is up, Irish man, man? All right, when did OG Starlord lose his Ravager tag? I never noticed it was gone until today. I never noticed he had one. I thought he didn't have one for a while, and it was only Starlord T'Challa that got that Ravager tag. I don't think uh, uh, Peter Quill T'Challa or Peter Quill Starlord ever had that. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe there was a brief moment that he had that but in even especially in the beginning of the game i don't think he ever had that in the beginning and he may have had it later but i don't think he did so uh i did i just think that's star with t'challa that had that tag uh hello once again support open the 9th of september last response the 12th haven't heard uh, from you we'll leave it open for seven days now the 16th ticket says it's open eight days it's supposed to be seven days no response from scopely does anyone still work at this company i am not sure uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, it's like they're in a reverse maintenance mode where they're not really maintaining their game. They're just working on pushing out new content. But the maintenance, fixing the bugs, making the game a more stable place, well, uh, that's that's something that's on the back burner for them. Hey, Val, I've been watching your videos since I started playing four months ago. Love the channel. Thank you, my brother. Thanks very much for all the great content. Question, if you're appointed as CEO of Scopely tomorrow, what changes would you make day one, month one, and year one? So day one, nothing. I think the the first, if if I did step into that role, I had that role, I would use a few days or, you know, a few weeks or so just to find out what is going on at the company, learning some of the issues before I figure out some solutions. Because if you don't know what the issues are, uh, you can't think of plans to solve it and all that stuff. So I don't really know what the issues are right now. I know from a player base what I'm experiencing, but I don't know what the cause of all that stuff is. So day one's probably nothing, but month one, I, I would do whatever I can to make this game a more stable game. I think, at least for me, and I know some players have issues with a lot of the other stuff that Scopely's doing, the pricing practices, some of these events going on, but at least for me, my biggest thing is all of these bugs. I mean, let's go back to these bugs. This is from last reported on uh, September 17th, and most of these things are still going on in the game, and no mention of a few things here. No mention of the phantom buffs in this whole thing, but these are still, uh, mo most of these are still ongoing and have not been solved. So a lot of issues, I would get this fixed. That would be my number one priority, get these fixed if I were the CEO of Scopely. Uh, after that, after we have a stable game, we don't have to worry about bugs. At that point, I would work on uh, making the game more fun, making it, uh, more inclusive to all players of all levels, not just end game players, but also newer players and mid game players so they could start enjoying this game as well. Getting newer players up to that mid game and mid game players up to the end game as quick as possible so that we're all playing the same game. Maybe it's through offers, maybe it's through some catch up mechanics, but something to get players up to the, the higher levels as soon as possible. That would be another priority for me. And to just trying to bring fun back, whatever, whatever's fun for the community and for me it's not blitzing i know f for some of you i guess it is but for me it's not blitzing i would try to reduce these mindless events and use more events that have strategy and also take a firm commitment to something that they said a while back that two hour time frame per day is what they're shooting for and if you're playing this game hardcore especially during some of these blitz events and some of these raid events and especially when taking into account all this loading time, I know my time could go way above that two hours. So I'll try to be respectful towards the player's time and uh, look at that stuff. But yeah, number one priority, get rid of these bugs. And all these errors are constantly happening and not being fixed. All right, thanks for years of great content. I have a question that I should already know the answer to, but I'm ask anyway. In Crucible, there are three matches. If I use a team once, can I use them in another? So 
Uh, you can use them in your first match. You could use that team again in your second match. And you could use that team again in your third match. But once you use them on defense, and I and you can switch your defenses around between trial one, trial two, and trial three. You can switch your defenses between them. But if they're on defense, you can't use that team. If you already use them offensively and not quit out of that battle, well, you can you can still use them. So uh yes, yeah, so you could use them once per uh battle with an opponent. So every time you have a new opponent, you can use that team again. So that that's 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 the way it works. So in one crucible, you could use them three times, but in each match, you could only use them once. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I love Ali. I noticed on Mobile's video that people are set for Crucible no higher than Silver 2. Yes, that is a big bug right now. Everybody is set to Crucible 2. So bad, in fact, that it screwed up the matchmaking and canceled our first season of Cosmic Crucible. What the heck, Scopely? How lazy are you that you couldn't even get this matchmaking or fix or fix all of our leaks? Because I think everybody got placed in Silver 2 right now. At least uh, all, the, all the complaints I'm seeing is people in Silver 2. Maybe some people got placed even lower than that. I check with my lines and no one was higher than that we had two players in masters and preseason i'm curious if this is widespread this is widespread uh so widespread like i said that it did cancel the first season of cosmic crucible any context you could provide be much appreciated you probably already know the answer at this point but if this is your first time uh getting this information that's everybody has this bug and that's why there's no crucible right now all right i am in silver one or two so that means chaos if you get a diamond or masters versus a true silver player yeah that's uh it's chaos right now Hey, Valley, you brought up a good point at the end of your video. We're quickly approaching October. Where is the roadmap? Who knows? Who knows? And, and in my last video, I said, doesn't even matter because there's no accountability at Scopely. Everything that they post in a roadmap could be something to change. The characters, the dates, the event numbers, the rewards, all this stuff is something to change. Kits are changing as well. So, and usually it's, it's around the same, but... Yeah, th there's no accountability, so I'd like a roadmap. I'd like it to be accurate. I'd like them to be accountable to what they say in the roadmap, but as we know, Scopely has no accountability. That's why they put that stupid line, everything is something to change on the bottom of every single one of their blog posts. Did Cerebro forget to make that left turn in Albuquerque and got lost? Probably. Probably. I've not heard from him. Uh, other than the issues that he talked about on Reddit and stuff last week, and he did respond to some Reddit comments last Friday, but before that, it was probably weeks before I, since I've heard from Cerebros. So yeah, maybe he forgot. He's been so busy taking vacations after Labor Day and all that stuff that uh, getting the roadmap to the players that, you know, managing the community, being the community manager, helping the players figure out what is going on with the game, what's a bug, what's on purpose. Yeah, that part he, he took off from. Um, I'm not gonna do it. I tried to do it once, it didn't even uh, work, like some people spend money or this, yeah, and I told them to stop. All right, uh, I'm not sure what that is about, but don't, I'm glad you didn't do it, my brother. Don't don't spend money with all these bugs. That's my recommendations. Hello from Virginia from Alliance, brother. What is up, brother Gunny? Member of the Alliance that I'm in, the TSF Pride. With all the issues in the game right now, the one thing they got was giving you your own character in the game, bra. they should rename you. Alley, in my opinion, they, uh, they can do that as well. I love it. Uh, I actually uh, used him as my avatar. So sort of sort of using this character right now. We don't want that thing, but we got him right here. We've switched it. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Will Underworld be a Scourge team counter? So like I was talking about in uh, the pr some of the uh, previous questions, the, the team, the, they said this Underworld team was designed to be a war offense team. I don't know if they test them on war defense because they're pretty strong even without Mr. Negative on war defense right now with Spider Weaver. So a nightmare team right now. Uh, will it be a Scourge counter team? It's designed to be a dorm hold counter team. Now, word is that right now they can eat uh, or when Mr. Negative comes in the game, they'll be able to counter the dark hold. We don't have a test server. We don't have any footage of that actually going live, but I, that's what they're designed to. So... As far as them being a counter team, that's what they're designed to do. Will they do that? I don't know. We might have to wait for a few reworks before they actually get that. I don't know. Teams like Skilitary, the X-Force, uh, the Shadowlands, 
a force a lot of these teams didn't work and they had to get some reworks for them to work as they were designed so yeah it's, it's not working as designed as far as, as far as i know but we won't know uh fully until mr negative gets here but Underworld looks pretty strong, at least on defense. Hey Valley, greetings from Houston, Texas. I'm currently in DD5 City. I have the global team chosen in Doom, Captain Sam, Lady Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and Sharon Carter. Already have Icarus down, about to finish Kestrel, working on Cersei. Who should be my other two? So you got two options right here. I went with a cheap option because at the time I was doing Dark Dimension, there was no knowledge about all uh, Apocalypse coming to the game. So I ended up going the cheap option, uh, built up Starlord T'Challa, and Ravager Stitcher, they're a pretty good duo in the game. Right? In the game, they work well together. They work well in Dark Dimension. Uh, Star Lord, at the time that I did that, had uh, some value in the tech section. Now, T'Challa, Ravager Stitcher, they're still going to have a little bit of value for this War Scourge event coming back or coming up the first time. But I don't know if they're gonna have a lot of value outside of that. They seem like a very trap team. They look like they're just relegated to war offense. So you might want to go a different direction than I did. Uh, but that is a cheap option. You know, if you're if you're starving resource, you want to go in right now. That's probably the option to do. The other option is building up your horsemen. Now, Doctor Strange, Heartless, I did build them up, and he doesn't do a lot in in Dark Dimension right now. But you're gonna need to build them up anyway. So it's kind of conserving your resource. Then you could go a few different ways. Uh, we have some teams that are kind of in the meta right now. A-Force kind of came back slightly into the meta. We have some other characters like America Chavez that are kind of there. And uh, at least America Chavez has that Scourge value. So does Captain Marvel for the Rogue event. Both of these are going to be for the Rogue event. We have other characters that uh, you may want to consider. We have these as guardians these cosmic as guardians right now we have all of the hero as guardians so you might want to bring them up uh if you want to build a strong team for up for the uh, war scourge event although they may not be very very good in dark dimension but it's just kind of uh conserving your resources those are the two ways to go i don't really see anybody that i'm using on a daily basis you got death pool here but i think your mystic gear is used on better used on some other characters uh, that is about it. I don't really see anybody that stands out at the top of my head that would really, really uh, provide value. I know you. I use Loki and Cable as speed options. I don't know if you really need to build them unless they're not surviving for you and not doing what you need. But I think I would go with uh, Heartless and then maybe a cheap option like either T'Challa or Ravager Stitcher. So kind of a mix of both worlds is probably what I would do nowadays uh, and not really take the hero as Guardians to gear 16 unless like thor i had some extra gear laying around but uh yeah that's that's what i would do nowadays probably not take up any of those characters all right and hey valley i have a bit of an odd question i have ideas on what i could do for gear 18 and 19 how do i send recommendation ideas to devs uh well you can reach out to cerebro on discord reach out to him on reddit whether he'll actually read your message whether he'll actually communicate to devs that is a big crap shoot but uh i would relay to him Hopefully it responds. I know sometimes they do respond. Back when the game didn't have as many bugs, they were responding a lot quicker uh, and a lot more regularly. You could also reach out to Archangel, although uh, I think if you can reach out to Cerebro, he does respond. You have a better chance of getting your ideas shared there. And that is it, Valley Club. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, despite some of the negativity going on in Marvel Strike Force right now. I'm still optimistic that the devs will change things around. We've always had these highs and lows in the game. I think we're in a very low place right now with a lot of bugs and a lot of greed from Scopely and very little communication. So hopefully all those things get changed very soon. Uh, hopefully you have already subscribed. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content. We have at least five videos per week on this channel. And if you haven't already hit that notification bell, hit that bell so you know as soon as a new video goes up. Check me out on Twitter. If you want to check out some Valley merch, make sure you check out Tee Public. There's always a sale going on there. So check out some of that. Share that with your friends, family, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and I'll see you at the top. Hulk fist bump. Valley flying out.